the weapon narcissists fears the most. We need to realize that, there is a spiritual warfare, constantly going on with narcissists. The narcissist does not want you happy, blessed, and rejoicing, but rather depressed, in debt, and blaming God, for all the wrong that is going on in your life. Narcissists will try, anything they can, to separate you from having a relationship with the Lord, and they are very successful at bringing problems our way, in order to keep our mind on anything, and everything, except God. You need to recognize, that is the enemy, trying to get in, and destroy what, you have. That is why it is all the more important, that we have a strong, and committed love for the truth with a discerning spirit. The weapon narcissists fear the most, is the word of God, in the hands of a born-again Christian. When the narcissist constantly sees your faith in God, and always asking guidance and wisdom, from the Lord, to help in your situation, then the enemy knows his power has become ineffective against your life. I encourage you to not sit idly by, and let the enemy win, but rather stand strong. It's time to stand, and to get up. It's time to plant our feet on the rock, Christ Jesus. It's time to shine a light, that cannot be hit. It's time to declare a truth that cannot be denied. We must stand on the rock. That rock is Jesus. I hope is built on nothing less, than Jesus' blood and righteousness. God bless you. Please, remember. Truth, is freedom. It's time to get right with God because Jesus is coming very soon. He's at the door. Paul the Apostle, in 2 Corinthians, said, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. He said, this is a day of mercy. This is a day of grace. This is the time for you to get right with God and deal with this mercy. Paul said, don't receive the mercy in vain. Don't turn away. Don't turn away from the gentle call of Jesus to come back to his arms. Now, this is a message of grace, but it's also a warning. Receive it as a warning. Now, today, is the day of salvation. Jesus warned that in the last days, many are going to grow cold. The scripture says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. And he said this is going to happen in a time he called the beginning of sorrows. And folks, we're living in what Jesus said, I believe this on my heart, that we're living in the beginning of sorrows. We're living in a time of unprecedented greed, rampant iniquity, sexual perversions beyond description. And Jesus said, in those times, in the beginning of sorrows, many hearts are going to grow cold. And he said they're going to turn away. This is not the day, if you've chosen this day, if, if you are still walking with a cold heart, you've chosen the wrong time. This is not the time, according to scripture, to reject the loving call of Christ. I hear people say, I can get right with God any time I choose. I'll know the time. I'm not ready yet, and I'll know the time. I, I have some things I want to accomplish in my life, and I have friends, and I want to enjoy myself, and when I'm, t when I'm ready, I'll come to God. Now, there's some problems with that. And there are issues that you've got to understand, because coldness leads to hardness. Th those who receive not the love of the truth will fall into the deceivableness of sin. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Exhort one another daily. And I'm exhorting you now. I'm doing exactly what the scripture says. While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness 
of sin. But you can be sitting here now, and I don't care how much love I, that comes from my heart. I don't care what kind of appeal I make. I don't care what kind of pleading the Spirit makes through me. If you have a hard heart, it's not going to work. You're not going to listen. You're not going to hear. And here, here's what I scribbled down, and I believe I, the Holy Spirit led me to this. Hardness, a heart that is beyond the influence of the, greatest, of the gracious pleading of Christ. They placed themselves beyond the pleadings of the Holy Spirit. It's a self-imposed exclusion with no intention of ever obeying the call of the gospel. No intention ever. No matter what preachers preach, no matter how the Lord himself could come down in the flesh, the Bible said, and they, many would not believe. Coldness leads to hardness. Now is the time to get right with God because this generation has lost, secondly, has lost the fear of God. There's no fear of God left in the land. This is what the Bible says. The fear of the Lord, fear the Lord and depart from evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from their evil. From the fear of the Lord. Years ago, I was invited to speak at a gathering at Yale University. And I was informed before the meeting that a group of demonstrators had come and with signs. They had read something I preached from Romans about homosexuality, I suppose. And they said they're going to demonstrate it at a certain time. And I, I said, Lord, what do I preach? And the Lord said, preach your message on hell. Hell, what's it like and who's going there? <laughs> I'd preached it all over the country. And friends, oh, I wasn't halfway through when a holy hush when a presence of the Holy Ghost came. I'll never forget it. There was a well-known writer who was writing uh, there to write a report of the meeting, and he said, my pen sounded loud. There was no demonstration. The fear of God came on that house, came on that campus, at least those who were gathered. I was stunned. I saw the power of the Holy Spirit dealing. No sign was lifted. I went to the lobby later and I asked one or two of those who had signs. I didn't even read what was on the sign. They were turned opposite. And they couldn't explain to me. They said, what happened? They couldn't explain it. It was the fear of God. The fear of God. <laughs> Call it what you want, reverential awe. Call it what you want. But there's such a thing as remember that God is not mocked. There's such a thing as looking at the majesty and holiness of God. You see, we have come from that to this. This past week, I come out of the apartment and there and the bus on the side. There's no God. Have fun. London, all over the buses. There is no God. Let's party. We've come from that. From that fear of God. And you see, if you have no fear of God, you have to invent a gospel of convenience. And this is what's happened in America and around the world. You, you see, man can't get away from that nagging sense. And that's the Holy Spirit who says there's death and then there's judgment. There's a day of standing before God to give an account. And the Bible makes it very, very clear. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And there's a day we're going to have to give an account. And there's a hell. And, and Jesus said there's, there's a hell of, of fire. And weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. A darkness that can be felt. And there's a hell. But, but you see, man has to invent a gospel where there's no God. And that's where we are in the United States and around the world right now. No hell, 
no heaven. This is it. So just live it up and have, have your time, have your fun. You see, the devil knew that he couldn't take that out of his gospel because everybody at least said he's a good man, he's a teacher, he's a prophet. And so he, he brings in a Jesus that is tolerant. That's the key word right now, tolerance. Tolerant toward same-sex marriage, tolerant toward everything. There's no such thing as sin. There's no such thing as a sinner. There's no such thing as judgment. And so they buy into that. Young people are buying into that. Many Christian young people are saying we need to be more tolerant. And so they too believe that same-sex marriage is, is okay with me. You know, they can do what they, they, they can try as they will. But now the Spirit speaks in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hard iron. Now see, what I'm preaching to you now is mercy. It's if I, I was thinking last night, the Bible said there's a narrow road that leads to eternal life and there's a wide road leading to destruction and you see them coming the road and they're heading pell-mell for over the hill and there's a glow on the other side of the hill and you know I stand there any man of God who's standing there and saying turn back go back go back friends I say that's mercy that is mercy what I'm giving to you now is the mercy of God who so loved you that he put you in a seat in this church this day and said today, now is the time to make it right. No one knows the time or the hour, but Jesus told it's going to happen, what's going to happen prior to his coming. He gives very clear evidence. Jesus said, there'll be wars, there will come false Christ, but don't be terrified because the end is not yet. Then, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs in the heaven. And then, he said, don't, don't be concerned about the wars and earthquakes. He said, he said but then, shall they see the Son of Man come in a cloud with power and great glory. But when, what does he mean by what then? Listen to what he said. When men's hearts fail them for fear and for looking upon those things that are coming on the earth. It's one of the surest signs when everywhere there's fear and men's hearts are failing them. Just watching those things that are coming on the earth. It's the same spirit that has come here. Is here now, been here, but now coming in a special way of invitation. I'm pleading with you. I haven't harangued, I have not pushed. I speak as an oracle of God. I've humbled myself before the Lord and said, God, Came here 50 years to win, 50 years ago to win souls. And God promised me that many would be awakened because He comes now. And I'm going to close in just a moment, but I want to remind you of Hosea 11th chapter, 7th verse. My people were bent on backsliding from me. But then all of a sudden you read this how can I give you up? How can I give you up, O Ephraim, which is Israel? He said, I, I, I know you. I know you're bent on backsliding. I, I know that there are times you, you have fallen. And You see, if your heart is hard, and you're willing to admit, yes, I'm growing cold, I'm drifting away, and I, I don't want to fall into hardness, and I, I don't want to abuse the grace of God. But God comes, and as he's coming now, and I'm going to close. He comes, and he's whispering it through me to you, into your ear. I can't give up on you. Please hear what the Spirit 
is saying in the 11th, 14th chapter, first verse, verse 4, I will heal your backsliding. I will love you freely, for my anger has been turned away from you. See, God's not angry at you. He's not mad at you. He's pleading with you, saying, now, come, my arms are open. I, I, I give you this. The words of Jesus, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to come right now and speak directly into your heart. The words of Jesus. And this when I said, you, it's time to make the move. It's time to come humbly to God and say, Jesus, I hear you. And here's the call. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and I'm lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. Take on my yoke, it's easy, my burden is light. And you'll find it's not difficult when you come to him and say, Lord, come, I repent, I give you my heart, I give you my sins. Make me new. Lord, I'm troubled. Yes, I've been down, I've been in despair. And I have not known peace. But Jesus says, all I'm asking you now is come.